Hello, I am Demonis. Thank you for joining, and I do hope you'll subscribe. Today we're going to talk about what's been in the mainstream media in the last uh, couple weeks or so. Uh, maybe it's simmering down a little bit right now, but I think we're, we're not done with this yet, right? Um, but I want to prove, and I think I can do this pretty simply, although we've got some more to talk about, but this idea that the Russians have hacked the U.S. government. I want to disprove that. And let's get started and let's look at that. So this is New York Times from uh, December 13th, uh, 2016. The perfect weapon. How Russian cyber power invaded the U.S. That is a lot of hyperbole. So let's get in here. and This, this is talking about... Um, FBI agent who contacted the Democratic National Committee in September 2015. And his message was a brief, brief but alarming, and at least one computer system belonging to the DNC had been compromised by hackers, federal investigators, and named the Dukes, a cyber espionage team linked to the Russian government. So this is the beginning of uh, the terrible things from this invasion. So this is the Constitution of the United States. And uh, I'll provide you with links under the video, of course. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do a quick search. And we're going to look for uh, Democratic. No, not even part of the word, right? Let's take a look for Republican. Okay, that comes up. Uh, but what it says, the United States shall guarantee to every state of the Union a Republican form of government. Nothing to do with political parties. And I'm hitting my enter key. No other hits. Let's try another uh, search, and let's try for party, because maybe I was searching for the wrong thing, right? All right, party. So we've got some things here. Judgment in cases of impeachment, and then it talks some, about some other things under the United States, but the party convicted shall nevertheless be liable. So that's not about political parties. Let's go to our next hit. And this is about judicial power uh, extending to all cases, and the controversies to which the United States shall be a party, so that's a legal uh, issue, in cases affecting ambassadors, other ministers, and consuls, uh, and those in which a state shall be party um, to the issue. All right, and then um, no person held to service or labor in one state, and this is about extradition, uh, but shall be delivered up, up on claim of the party to whom such service or labor shall be due. And then if we hit again to our next search, we're back to the original. So right off the top here, what I wanted to do is really uh, clarify this here, that political parties are not part of our government. The Constitution of the United States defines the legislative, executive, and judicial branches of government. And it does talk about uh, powers of states in relation to the federal government, but nowhere does it define political parties as part, themselves, as part of the government. But hey, let's go back, you know, so, all right, maybe there's something else that New York Times was had a beef about and said that we were invaded, right? So let's go in here, and it says, the low-key approach of the FBI meant that Russian hackers could roam freely through the committee's network. So in the uh, beginning of the article, it basically says that uh, someone contacted their help desk, and for those reasons, the, the DNC didn't know for all this time, right? And so it says they were allowed, these hackers were allowed to uh, go un, uh, unstopped through their network, right? In the meantime, the hackers moved on to targets outside the DNC, including Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman, John Podesta, whose private email account was hacked months later. Let's look at the things that were hacked, okay, and the WikiLeaks. The WikiLeaks hacked releases of his email, personal emails. And again, even the New York Times here, private emails. So we found out from this that Obama lied when he said that he didn't know Hillary was using a private server because he had, there had been an email where he had contacted her at that account. Hillary Clinton dreamed of hope openly, uh, completely open borders, uh, and she said, my dream is a hemispheric common market with open trade and open borders. Um, Hillary took money from 
known operatives and associates of ISIS. Um, and I'll, again, I'll give you this in the link so you can read all this stuff yourself. Um, this was a pretty common one that people heard about. Has public positions and policy and private ones. Well, she said that I have to have both, right? These are all from Podesta's private emails, right? Uh, paying people to incite violence at Trump rallies. And the list goes on and on. Right? But I think the worst of John Podesta's leaked emails has got to be this, about the spirit cooking. So um, in an email, this was between him and his brother and this woman named uh, Maria Abramovic, who holds these uh, satanic type of rituals, and we'll see that on the next screen here. But um, in this, um, he's actually trying to secure tickets to the um, uh, to an event Hillary is having, and uh, and Maria Abramovic replies to John Podesta saying, "I'm sorry, I will not be able to make it." Um, inviting him to this special dinner. All right. Now, what is spirit cooking for those who aren't familiar? So spirit cooking is, it's really a bizarre thing. So it's this, so we can see in this picture here with Lady Gaga and Maria Abramovic. Um, this is where they bake cakes and food to look like butchered human beings. But I want to bring this out too, that John Podesta, you know, uh, said on December 18th on Meet the Press with the host Chuck Todd, and in this, he had this to say. He said, what I said was baffling, Chuck, was on October 7th as the director of national intelligence, Jim Clapper, and Jay Johnson, director of Homeland Security, went out and said, the Russians are trying to interfere in our election. Director Comey counseled against that. He said, I don't want the FBI's name on that. So in here, Podesta is actually confirming a couple things. He's confirming that there's only two intelligence agencies Director of National Intelligence and Homeland Security, who have actually made this, made a claim that could be construed as such to say Russians were responsible for these hacks. And the other thing that he's actually admitting here is that the FBI is not part of that. So part of what's come up recently is this about the 17 intelligence agencies. So this is USA Today, and this is from December 16th, and it's saying, yes, 17 intelligence agencies really were, uh, really did say that Russia was behind the hacking. Now, this is from, this is from this, uh, October, October 19th, but this is where, uh, this is, again, the same hacking situation that we're talking about. On rushing hacking connection, the U.S. isn't as sure as Clinton says it is. And then we have the National Review on October 20th. That said, no, Hillary, 17 intelligence agencies did not say Russia hacked Democratic emails. What Clinton said was false and misleading. First of all, only two intelligence agencies, the DNI and Homeland Security, have weighed in on this issue, not at 17 individual intelligence agencies. And what they said was that the hacks are consistent with the methods and motivations of Russian-directed efforts. These thefts and disclosures are intended to interfere with the U.S. election process. Such activity is not new to Moscow. The Russians have used similar tactics and techniques across Europa and Eurasia, for example, to influence public opinion there. We believe, based on the scope and sensitivity of these Russia efforts, that only Russia's senior-most officials could have authorized these activities. So, again, that's, that is the statement. The statement is not saying that they did, that they have proof, but they're just saying that, hey, it seems like things that they would do. December 13th, from Reuters, exclusive top U.S. agencies, uh, spy agency has not embraced CIA assessment on Russian hacking. So in here, they're actually saying that while the Office of the uh, Director of National Intelligence does not dispute the CIA's analysis of Russian hacking operations, it has not endorsed their assessment because of a lack of conclusive evidence that Moscow intended to boost Trump over Democratic opponent Hillary Clinton. So, getting back to everything here, again, this is new NBC News, December 9th, and I just wanted to say that really, again, what's being brought up is the same thing that was brought up in October about this purported 17 U.S. intelligence agencies 
Uh, and it says it in here. But since the U.S. government has already said that all 17 U.S. intelligence agencies agree Russia was behind the hacks, I've proven right here that that is not the case. Let's go back to the New York Times and see what else they had to say was uh, devastating how we were invaded by the Russians. The following included the resignations of Re Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz of Florida, the chairwoman of the DNC, and most of her top party aides. Leading Democrats were sidelined at the height of the campaign, silenced by revelations of embarrassing emails or consumed by the scramble to deal with the hacking. You know, listening to that there, they sound like glorious people. But let's remember what really happened. This is from The Observer, July 22nd. WikiLeaks proves primary was rigged. DNC undermined democracy. And this article goes on to, you know, again, show how they were favoring Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. And even here in the mainstream, New York Times, July 24th, when they're not making it sound like they're so wonderful now, they said showed party officials conspiring to sabotage the campaign of Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont. So wrapping this up, were we invaded? Was the U.S. invaded by the Russian government? I think it's clear from what I've shown that the U.S. government was not invaded by anyone. One, we don't really know who did this, and neither are the intelligence agencies certain of that because they haven't made statements that explicitly claim that only allude to that sheepishly, sheepishly clue, uh, allude to that let's say but even if we were even if these hacks were from a foreign government the reality is the Democratic Party the Republican Party Libertarian Party Green Party whatever party you want to say is not is not a part of the U.S. government. We may have senators, congressmen, presidents who are members of those parties, but that doesn't make the party part of the government. 